Chapter 110 Miss Adler sat on top of the emergency room nurse's station, next to the sign that read, Inpatient Processing. She was in clear view of everyone, yet no one saw her. She wouldn't allow it. She was invisible, as she was before she fell asleep in the waiting room when Nancy was on the phone. It was a simple trick. A tiny suggestion radiated from her mind, ordering everyone's eyes not to see her. Their imaginations filled in the space she took up. The security guards couldn't see her on their monitors, although the cameras could. She ignored them. With her ability to mentally access AI, she could erase any video at will. She used the same ability to block Virginia, Chris, and Sanford's cell phones. Using her techno-telepathy, she sent a tiny command through the cell tower, blocking their calls until she released them. At the same time, she kept tabs on them through GPS. She had the end game choreographed to the final act. Everything would happen in stages. Her pawns were weaving the tapestry precisely as she intended. There was nothing to do except wait and avoid the gypsy at all costs. Damn her, Ms. Adler thought. How did she find me? I have been so careful. She remembered the albino boy with the platinum blonde hair. Yes, he is the one. He found me. But how? The boy was a clear threat. His mental defenses were formidable. Every time she tried to scan him, he resisted her without effort. She wondered where he obtained such power. He didn't demonstrate any abilities, but he must possess some to block hers. No ordinary person, no matter how disciplined, was immune to her telepathy. Ms. Adler thought, It is possible they might not interfere at all. Maybe they cannot. If they could, they would have, would they not? Why are they waiting? She dismissed her concerns. It does not matter. I know they are here now. I have come too far to fail. Miss Adler caught a distant, angry thought. Jack Dugan was almost at the hospital. Chris McKee and his mother weren't far behind him. Everything was on schedule. Jeremy would be hers. She scanned the surface thoughts around her. Adele Weisenberg, a Lancaster native and longtime friend of Nancy, Garth, and Amanda, opened the doctor's lounge for Amanda and Garth. They were grateful to be able to grieve in private. Miss Adler found Garth's weakness sickening. She gleaned worse thoughts from the children in the waiting room. Max Ramirez was the only genuinely honorable one of them all. It was a shame he was a mongrel. He was a much better choice than Jeremy. Matt, a true Aryan, a demigod in boy's clothing, would be perfect too, but for his genetic shortcomings. Miss Adler floated down from her perch. She walked silently through the crowd toward the elevators. She entered when one of the doors opened and pressed the button for the top floor. She felt a large syringe in her skirt pocket. She recalled Dabney's terror as he watched her prepare the serum's final composition. She opened her mind to him completely and allowed him to witness all the murders Hiram committed, the legacy of her power. She added that horror to the Buchenwald memories he was already drowning in. Dabney was lying on the floor of the lab when she closed the concrete door for the last time. He was drooling, wide-eyed, and on the verge of insanity. She proceeded to write the last chapter of Thomas McKee's life, a work of telepathy the equivalent of fine art. She could not openly kill Thomas, but utilizing distraction and influence, she set in motion a series of events her daughter's subconscious aversion to murder couldn't thwart. She intended to destroy her and then her house the moment she claimed the new power. It would require nothing more than a stray thought to blast it all to atoms, the lab and Dabney included. Ms. Adler exited the elevator on the pediatrics floor, slipping past two confused nurses. They wondered why someone sent the elevator up with no occupant. They passed it off as a prank. Dancing clowns holding bunches of colored balloons grinned at her from the hallway wallpaper. Ms. Adler stuck her tongue out at them 
making a childish face before continuing. She pushed open the door to Jeremy and Craig's room with her telekinetics. They looked up, appearing drawn and weary. Good, Miss Adler thought, not allowing them to see her. It is essential they stay that way. The door closed. The boys laid back down. They blamed the movement on the wind. Miss Adler scanned them. She heard Craig's soothing words as he spoke to Jeremy through the mind link. It served its purpose well. It's what made Chris a perfect choice for her needs, his strong will, his independent spirit. Jeremy was weak. If Chris were the chosen one, he would have endured a similar accident, but with his mother. It was necessary to break the spirit and weaken the will. There was no better way to crush someone than by taking away a loved one. Without the mind link to draw on Craig's strength, the shock of the accident would have left Jeremy catatonic, trapping him inside his own mind. Chris didn't need a cushion. Craig wouldn't have needed one either if she chose him. His genetic imperfections and his maternal grandmother's Jewish heritage made that impossible. Race contamination is so disgustingly common these days, Miss Adler thought. I can smell it in Craig. It is nauseating. Jeremy's lineage was pure, albeit not German, yet unspoiled by the subhuman mixtures that ruled out so many of the other children. Miss Adler felt his love for Craig. It was stronger than she hoped. It was an emotion impossible to force. It had to grow naturally. Friendship would have been good enough. But love was better. She concentrated, her eyes bursting midnight blue brilliance. Sleep, children. The time has nearly come. Their bodies obeyed and slipped into Craig's dreamscape. Miss Adler locked them in there and levitated Craig back to his bed. Your usefulness, Master Dugan, she thought, is not yet over. She sat on the windowsill and waited. She sensed the tension rising in the waiting room downstairs. Another pawn in her grand play was taking center stage. She felt his raging presence. Jack Dugan was here.